Hi guys, Roger, back with another video. I am an enterprise solutions architect working at AWS. In this video, I ask you a delicate question. Let's say you are a senior architect or in some senior management position working in a large enterprise. And one fine day, you decide, hey, we gotta move to AWS. Now what? How are you gonna move this massive company with hundreds, if not thousands of applications to AWS? Is there a method to this madness? Do you go to each application and ask them to move? So we are gonna go through steps to migrate large enterprises into cloud and stages of migration in this video. Also, this comes up a lot in interviews, especially if you are a senior architect or in higher management positions. So shout out to Stephen Arban, who wrote this book, Ahead in the Cloud, which puts down some rules, steps, and some learnings. I highly recommend reading this book. All right, with that being said, let's get into it. Of course, every company's journey will be different. But if you think about all the enterprises and our esteemed author has spoken to companies that are at every level of maturity, he has found some recurring patterns and commonalities. So based on that, Stephen Harbin has created these stages of adoption that we are gonna look into. So the first stage is project. So what is project? So most organizations start with a few projects where they are experimenting with how to do IT differently and learning what the cloud can do for them. So you select the projects to get familiar with the cloud. It should be important enough for people to care. However, don't pick something super critical from get go. You don't want people to think if they fail, they are fired. It should have some room for learning and avoid analysis paralysis. Focus on bias for action. Then the next step is foundation. This is when executives say to themselves, okay, there is some real possibility here. Now we need to get serious. And to get serious about this at scale, I need to make a couple of foundational investments so I can scale these new capabilities throughout my organizations. So to spread the learning and practices that you achieved on the project phase, you create a cloud center of excellence. And ideally you create a landing zone or some sort of account vending machine so that any application that's coming in and wants to migrate to cloud, you can give them a mechanism to create an account. You build reference architectures to reuse. You define security and compliance requirements. And most importantly, the last two points, you create a culture of learning. Talent transformation is the hardest part of cloud adoption. So at this point, you did your proof of concept projects, you learned, and then you created a cloud center of excellence who created some blueprints and security and compliance requirements. Then comes migration. So this is where mass migration begins. Here we develop a business case to quantify the benefits they can achieve by migrating their legacy systems to the cloud. We see mission critical apps migration, entire data centers migration, and cloud adoption scaled throughout organization. So this is a critical phase and there are different migration strategies which we are gonna come back after we finish the steps. And the last step is reinvention. As the name suggests, reinvention is you re-architect your apps. You utilize cloud native services and you focus on cost optimization. Many companies, including GE Oil & Gas, find that it's easier to optimize their applications after they have migrated them to the cloud because of the expertise they gained along the way. Many of these organizations begin to feel as though they have reinvented themselves and are applying their newfound capabilities across their entire business. Okay, remember I told you there are different ways to migrate the projects. Let's zoom in into this phase a little bit more. 
So there are different migration strategies. Rehost, replatform, repurchase, and refactor. So let's take a look at Rehost. Rehost is also known as lift and shift. You move your applications to AWS as is. However, you still achieve 30% cost saving compared to data center. And applications are easier to re-architect once in cloud because skill level is up from doing migration. Next one is replatform. It is also known as lift, tinker, and shift. You move to AWS with the same core architecture. However, you implement few cloud optimization, such as use database as service RDS instead moving your database to VMs. Next is repurchase, also known as drop and shop. Here you move to a different product, mostly SaaS based. For example, moving a CRM to Salesforce, HR system to Workday, etc. And retain and retire is not really a migration strategy. Retain is basically you stay where you are and retire, you retire your existing app. So of course, every company's journey will be different, but this is a path laid out from the learnings from migration of different enterprises. You can always customize it based on your organization's rate of change. For example, if you think you can skip this migration phase and you can re-architect your apps and directly go to cloud native, cloud managed services, hey, power to you. Again, I highly recommend reading Stephen Arban's book, Ahead in the Cloud. I'll put the link to it in the description. All right, guys, that is the video. If you like this video, please smash that like button and click subscribe. I will see you guys later. Peace.